We're going to continue on here in the media center with a driver who really needs very little introduction here in this area. Clint Boyer, driver of the number 15 five-hour energy Toyota for Michael Walter Bracing. And Clint, throwing out the first pitch at Kauffman Stadium, you showed some pretty good form. You painted, you painted the outside corner for a strike. And uh, talk about that whole experience out of Kauffman Stadium. You're going to call that the corner? I got the corner. There's no way. There was, it was like three feet. <laughs> They've narrowed the strike zone, not made it bigger. But, uh, yeah, Christine and old Ned there put me together bad. I'm thinking go to the game, tailgate with friends in a parking lot, have a couple beers, take in a ball game like everybody else, and enjoy the night. And, oh, no. Oh, no. I showed up and uh, suited me up, and we went and, and had batting practice, uh, went to the bullpen, and Guthrie threw some – some stuff at me. He threw a fastball by me and then a curveball. Man, I'm telling you, you never, when you stand in front of that baseball, it gives you a whole new appreciation for a professional level of, of ball like that. Holy cow. I mean, here I am. My, my knees are already buckled and I'm starting to get out of the way, you know, and by the time it hits the dirt, it's like 12 feet away from you. So it wasn't even close. But uh, great experience, fun to, to, uh, to see the Royals. It's, it's been a, a great ride here so far, and they ain't done yet. Well, we're going to open the floor up now to questions. We're going to start over here with Tom. So if you have any questions for Clint, please raise your hand. Hey, Clint, Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. New rules package this year. You guys are going a lot faster in the middle of the corners. How is that for you as a driver, and do you guys have any concerns about that? Well, I mean, it's kind of exactly opposite of what all the drivers were, were asking for and, and, and hoping for. But, uh, um, you know, that's there's constantly working to try to improve the package, you know, that, that the race fan sees as a whole. Um, you know, it is a little bit disappointing because, uh, in, in, in my opinion, you need more off-throttle time to create a racing environment on the racetrack. If, if, you're wide open and you're not lifting. I don't know how you're going to get around that car in front of you when they're doing the same. Um, you know, that being said, you, you got to make the most out of uh, tracks like this. You got to have fast uh, equipment, a fast race car, and ultimately a lot of horsepower under the engine or under the hood. Sorry. Um, that being said, it is what it is. And it's just like Jeff said earlier. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to win. You don't have to have the fastest car, but it certainly makes it a lot easier when you do have the fastest car when uh, you're in an environment where the corner speeds are so high. Go next to Kelly. Kelly Crandall from PopularSpeed.com. Clint, you've admitted that the mile-and-a-half program for Michael Walter Bracing worries you. So now that we're here, what's the focus been for the organization? What are you guys trying to improve on? Do you know what you're fighting? Well, I mean, anytime you're in any kind of – you know, competition, you're, you're trying to better yourself until you're the, the best, and, and then you're still trying to better yourself. But uh, we know we're behind, so this is definitely the area we've been working on. We've, we've been working very hard in the wind tunnel and trying to find some aero advantages, some gains that we feel like we're behind on, on the aero side of it. And then um, the engine guys have been working hard on, on trying to, to, you know, make some gains under the hood as well because we know we're behind there too. So, um, you know, those are the two big hitters on a, on a fast mile-and-a-half race track like this and when you're behind, behind in both of them it makes it pretty hard but um they have they've, they've made gains in both and i'm looking forward to to getting on the racetrack and hopefully uh reaping the benefits of their hard work clint todd palmer kansas City star I, I was wondering if you could tell me where you were and what your reaction was when you heard that this race was going to be the spongebob square pants 400 well I wish I was with my five-year-old nephew when he heard that it was going to be the SpongeBob SquarePants 400, but uh, uh, <laughs> SpongeBob's a big deal. He's got his own race, man. Uh, somebody told me it's been around since 99 or something, so Sponge is old, too. Is that the trophy, just going to hand you an old sponge and <laughs> send you on your way, go home and scrub up? I mean, uh, Super absorbent. Yeah. I mean, that's one way to save some money on a trophy, just... Called SpongeBob SquarePants and <laughs> Sponge and sent them on their way. But, you know, you're always looking for a younger demographic. And what a better way um, to attract that younger demographic. I mean, I, I can't imagine, um, you know, any younger kid 
not wanting to come to the SpongeBob SquarePants, you know, race. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's there's a lot of ca cars that have the, the SpongeBob and all the characters on their cars. So they've done a good job creating and building a good package for this race. Um, now I just tweeted. I woke up this morning, and you always feel better when you wake up in Kansas. But I was like. I've had a hell of a good time already, and we haven't even got in a car yet. We haven't been to a ball game. We've ate more barbecue than we should have. Um, I went to Bass Pro Shops. I went to Legends last night and shopped. I mean, where else can you go to a racetrack and do all these things in a day's time uh, during a little bit of a rain delay and some downtime and, and enjoy yourself all in, you know, walking distance or so from here? So um, great racetrack, great facility, and it's always fun to come back here. We'll go next to Chris and then over to Stan. Chris Knight, CatchMinds.com. Clint, uh, David Reagan, teammate this weekend here at Michael Walter Racing. Have you had any chance to spend some time with him before you guys arrived at the track? And do you you guys set the expectations bars moving forward? We talked uh, in driver intro. Driver intro is a big, big opportunity to catch up with your fellow drivers. So last, last week's driver intros, we talked a little bit. And, um, you know, obviously after this first practice, we'll be talking a lot more. It'd be interesting to see after he's been in the Gibbs cars, what's he feel in, in our cars and, and maybe where we're better and where we're, you know, not as good. So that's a good uh, right now when, when we know we've been behind and we're really working hard to try to better ourselves and figure this all out. It's a good asset to have somebody that's been in, in, you know, pretty, pretty damn good equipment with kind of the same horsepower under the hood. So the feel is all going to be, you know, aero. It's going to be chassis and stuff like that. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing his input when, after after the first practice. Go to Stan and then back to Lee. Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight. Um, Clint, how much? Well, let me reword that. How pressured are you internally to win at this racetrack? And, and, yeah. and how, many of your, how many of your family fans in this area are just pressuring you? Oh, everybody. Um, you know, everybody. I mean, it, it's, it, but nobody puts any more pressure on yourself than, than you do. You know what I mean? It, it really comes from within. And if it doesn't, you're probably not going to be, you know, in your profession very long. But uh, this track, it would it would mean a, a big deal, a great deal to win this place. Uh, um, but right now, it's so funny as you go through your career in, in any sport, there's there's times where you're, you, you know damn well that you're really close to wins. And there's other times when you couldn't be uh, any farther away from that feeling. And, and certainly this year has, has tested a little bit of both of those. Um, but, you know, I, I've watched these guys work so hard on this car and, and, and bring, you know, a, a new car with a lot of uh, potential and a lot of, you know, momentum and, and hard work put into it. It's kind of, um, you know, a great deal of pride going into knowing that those guys worked that hard for me, for my home track. And, and ultimately, this is our next swing at the bat. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to going out there and seeing our hard work, you know, hopefully put on display in a fast race car. But, uh, yeah, you always have that pressure. And, and obviously, when you go home, it's even that much more because all your friends, you know, they'll start calling about last Thursday. You, are you ready to win, Kansas? So, you know, we're going to be there Tuesday. Are you, are you ready? Uh, so, yeah, certainly uh, it would be awesome to win here. Could you, geez, we're going to need a, a hospital if we win here. Up next, Lee, and then we'll go right next door to Jerry. I'm just wondering what you're going to put in that IV. But anyway. Um, in the what? The IV, if you end up in the hospital. But, um, er <laughs> Life. <laughs> <laughs> er Eric Jones, you know, young kid coming in fresh back when you were here. We really just didn't see kids that young getting opportunities. Um, what is it about him that you think he'll survive in this game? Well, I think just the same thing you saw in Kyle Larson and all these young kids. I mean, they've been racing since they were, you know, little old enough to get in and, and hold the steering wheel up. Um, they they were racing, and, and not only racing, they were, you know, racing at a touring level. There, there's a difference between just racing at home, that same track every week, finding a good setup, um, knowing every driver you're around. These kids are touring all across the country, all some of them all around the world, uh, racing in, in different, uh, you know, formats, different um, 
you know, competitors each and every week. Every time they're at, at, at the racetrack, they're driving against somebody new. So when you throw them to the wolves like, like they've been, like Eric Jones is getting this weekend, um, it's no big deal to them. It, it doesn't register. They're, they're focused on the things they're supposed to be focused on. And that's so hard to understand. You know, I couldn't imagine with the little experience that I had when I first started on asphalt, just going straight to cup, you know what I mean? Within a year or so's time. I mean, it's, it's, a um, a great deal, a, a huge challenge to overcome. And, and that's the neat thing is they're right off the bat stepping in working on the race car instead of freaking out that they're next to Jeff Gordon on the racetrack. You know what I mean? It, that would be easily, uh, understandable to do. Clint. Jerry and then Nick. Clint. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires. You've, Express some mild displeasure over the radio about your car and handling. You call that mild. <laughs> I can't yell any louder, damn it. That's horrible. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. How comfortable are you in the conversations that you've had back at the shop and in moving forward that you guys are really on the right path to turning things around? Well, you know... Looking back at the start of the year, that West Coast swing sucks. Uh, and, and it was, I'll never forget, it was Daryl Waltrip was telling me somewhere it was his idea and how much fun it was. I'm like, no, that was horrible. That was the worst idea ever. And he's like, what are you talking about? It's the West Coast swing, baby. I'm like, no, it was, it was three weeks of hell is what it was because you're already prepared you know, for all three of those those races, month ahead of time. Yeah, you know, by the time we went to Daytona, we already had to have everything ready for that West Coast swing. You get out there and you find yourself behind. How do you get caught up? You know, the guys, the crews, every, everybody's out there. You got what you got, and, and, and that was that's a month. Then you get back. It takes a month to you know get sorted out what direction because obviously you've been down a path. You know, you're headed down that direction uh, 100 percent with with full speed ahead and then all of a sudden you got to pull the reins back you got to change direction figure out what direction to go to then head down that direction that's another month you know so so now we're two months into this thing and and uh just now starting to see this next path and and you know that that west coast swing three races right there right off the bat was a big part of that so you know you can't blame anything i mean you, we should have been ready and we thought we were ready but uh you know unfortunately we weren't and there's been a lot of crazy things happen too you know brian the unfortunate you know thing that he had it's how do you how do you uh, forecast that you know and and then uh, that that put us behind and forced uh you know, Brett Moffat to step in and really do something that he's never been involved with, too, and then also get in a car that, that really, you know, wasn't running as, as well as it should have, too. So that was a, a huge um, undertaking for him, and, and he did a hell of a job. That kid's a good race car driver, a great kid, and uh, I think he's going to have some more opportunities at the Cup level, so I'm glad to see that. One more thing before I go. Uh, Five Hour Energy, like we always do, uh, cherry uh, flavor Five Hour Energy that's come out. It's the Special Ops Warrior Foundation that it's going to, uh, five cents of every bottle. You, you hear five cents, you're like, that's not much. And I'm telling you, millions of bottles later, that's a lot of money. So looking forward to uh, having a good run. And it's all because of cherry flavored Five Hour Energy. I'm going to get it the hell out of here. You ready, Deal? Do you have any questions? We got, we got one more question. I got, here I got one bag. more. It's, it's a good way to end it. So, going, Nick Bromberg, Yahoo Sports, going back to the party if you win, are you going to break out the flamethrower? Flamethrower is not here, but Johnny Dare informed me he has Does he have a backup? some napalm coming for me, and uh, his is close by. So, yes, if we win, there could be a flamethrower in victory lane. That would be awesome. Is that acceptable, Pat? Yes. 